Hi, I'm Rob Trossy Kicks. On today's show, well, we're going to be checking out something a little bit older. No, 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 that's not what I meant. You lot need to get out more. Actually, 2012 to be precise, and it's this, the Cougar SV2. It's a two-wheel drive racing buggy all the way back from 2012 to 2013. So this was kindly gifted to RC Kicks from a lovely Patreon called Franco. So a massive thanks to him for sending this over. Now let's unbox it, take a look at what he sent over, and uh, I may have already started tinkering with it, also, we're going to talk about this one and I'm going to try and convince you that this is a great way to go in 2023. And this is a lovely example. I am super chuffed with this one. A lot of these have obviously done a lot of hard work and been around the track and put in some serious effort. This one doesn't seem to have done tons and tons of work. Luckily for this, you can get an under tray, so it protects the actual chassis quite a lot. But looking at the arms that are on it, and the front bumper and the rear bumper, it doesn't look like it's been hammered every week in, week out at the local track. But that doesn't mean we're not going to splash a little bit of love on this one and bring it back to a shelf queen. As you see it now is not actually as it come. It came with a different body on it, which comes from the later version. In my parts bin, I had this body. I'm not quite sure where I got this body from. It probably came in a load of other random Schumacher stuff, but I remember the way that it was cut out at the front. So when I unboxed this, I tried to remember, did I have that body? And sure enough, I did. So that saved me a few pounds as well. Now, my plan for this one is to restore it to basically a shelf queen. I'll come on to why in a little while, but let me tell you a bit more about the car. So this was announced at the Nürburgring Toy Fair back in 2012, and there was two versions you could get, the K123, which was the kit version, and K124, which was actually a fully assembled one. And that's what this is. This is a K124. Now, I can't tell exactly if it's been modified too much, but there is quite a few optional extra parts that are on this that we'll go through in a bit. Now, it came out in 2012, and in 2013, there was the SVR, which was the dirt and low traction version of this car. So you had the choice. A bit like what we've got with what's just coming out from Schumacher now, but instead of releasing it all in one go, they released this, and then they released the dirt version. Then after the SVR, they moved on to the KR range range and it's kind of a slow evolution from this car and you can see it as they progress through one kit to the next which is really cool to see now i have to say a massive thank you to duncan as well for sending over a boatload of Schumacher tires and it just so happens that when it arrived I was about to place an order for some parts for this which we'll come on to in a bit but he had the front tires and the rear tires which was brilliant because I was about to buy them so that saved me quite a few pennies so what else have I done with it well the shocks came with no oil in them at all I think it just been parked up to go on the shelf so I refilled the oil I did have uh, two issues with the shocks one one of them was missing an o-ring so it leaked straight away as soon as I actually rebuilt it other seemed to be fine and one of the top caps had a bend in it so it must have taken an impact at some point but I managed to bend it back without removing too much of the anodizing so you wouldn't really know and it's fine I put them all back together again and they seem to work fine the optional anti-roll bar kit was in the box so I put all those little pieces back together again and I reinstalled it as well so this car has quite a few optional extras already fitted to it so I was really chuffed with that uh, along the front it's got the alloy link at the front <laughs> then round the back we've got well the anti-roll bar that I fitted back again but it's got the alloy strap it's got the alloy rear lower gearbox housing it's also got the alloy gearbox case it's got the carbon fiber rear link across the back so quite a few options already added to it i refreshed some of the bolts that had looked a bit manky and gave the links a polish some of the links seem to be a bit short especially the steering ones but i'm pretty sure i've got parts bins ones that i can actually fit instead otherwise i'll just order a set of other ones and speaking of ordering stuff yes there is a whole list of parts that i want to get for this schumacher still makes the parts for this so it's not that difficult to get most of the bits you're looking for so i'm going to change the front bumper the rear bumper just to get rid of that scratching that you can see underneath the front and rear wishbones i'm going to replace them as there is some actual marks on them i'm going to try and make this one a shelf queen so i could probably get away with leaving them but hey they're available now so we might as well get them the rear wing the rear wing that's on it is not the one that was in the kit it actually looks like it's from a b6.4 
So I'll get another rear wing as well. And I'm gonna send the body off to be pro painted because I wanna go box art with this. Um, box art. Now there seems to be two versions. One is like a black, which is pretty easy to do, but they also did a Union Jack livery over the top of it, which looks really complicated. So I'm probably gonna go for that one, but I'm gonna send it off to be pro painted as that's well outside my skill level. Under tray, I need a new under tray for it. And what else? The stickers, I've got some of the stickers, but I wanna get another set of all the stickers. And that's pretty much it. A new set of front rims, as well as a set of rear rims. And that's the plan. I think that pretty much covers all the upgrades I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna spend about 70, 80 pound on this car and hopefully it's gonna come out looking bang on. And that brings us on to why I recommend getting one of these now. Now, I was gonna do a whole video on this and I probably will, but we'll touch on it a little bit. Now, what happens is a new racing buggy comes out, super expensive, super popular, everyone buys it, everyone races it. Then uh, uh, after a year to two years, new versions come out, racers move on to the latest and greatest and they sell on their racing buggies. A lot of them get picked up dirt cheap by people and then a lot of them get raced a little bit and then stuck on a shelf and then that's where they sit for year on year. Then you get to about this kind of age, 2012, because we're in 2023, and they're just not worth much. You can pick up one of these for about 150 pound, depending on condition and quality and what you actually get, whether you get electronics or anything like that. So you're picking up a lot of car between 100, 150 pound, that's pretty good going. Then over time, they actually start to become desirable as the vintage people get into them. You can really see that with Schumacher as right now the Fireblade is the one that's starting to go up in price. So you can see the Cougar came out, the Cougar 2 works and the Fireblade is now becoming more desirable. So eventually these are only going to go one way up in value. So now is a brilliant time to pick up this kind of car, dirt cheap, also, the parts are still available to return it into a lovely example of it so that you can actually keep it in your collection and you'll never really lose money on it. As long as you don't go too nuts with all the extra parts. So buy a good one, don't buy a totally ragged one. Also, if you're starting out in racing, this is a bargain place to start because racers have bought these back in the day, buy a load of parts so when they break them and then when they sell them on, they tend to sell them on with loads of wheels and tires and loads of parts. Now this one can actually run saddle packs, but you can get a conversion as well so that you can run a stick pack, which would be a bit more modern. And I'm pretty sure you can get a shorty in this one way or another, it wouldn't be that difficult. So it's one that you could happily pick up now and take racing if you're thinking of starting out before you spend an absolute fortune on them. And one thing I think this goes towards this buggy being valuable to more vintage people down the line is it's not cab forward. It's one of the last sort of standard cab at the rear. So good looking buggy, very low and swoopy. So my personal guess is that this is only gonna go up in desirability over the next few years. Obviously, as I've been gifted this one, it will stay in a collection. I also have a K1 Aero four wheel drive that's a little bit newer than this one that I'm gonna restore on the show as well. So next time this will be back on the show, we'll be getting the body done. I'll be fitting all those parts to make it a lovely shelf queen. And after I've done that, it will go on the shelf and I'll dust it every month. <laughs> Thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.